in this segment um, on Undisputed, Skip and Shannon are going to discuss the Lakers' um, 120, I believe it was 128 to 119 loss to the Blazers. Um, what I took from that game before they um, say what they're going to say, first of all, the Lakers, to me, they don't play enough defense. Uh, they play too fast. LeBron James is used to playing in the East. His body is used to playing the Eastern Conference, um, you know, speed of the game. And in the West, the, the, the game is fast-paced, up and down. It's more like a college atmosphere as far as how the players play. Now, Le LeBron James either faded in the second half or either he was taking the second half off. I don't believe he was taking the second half off. I believe he faded in the second half. The man is 33 years old. He's not a young player. He tries to play like he's young, but he's not a young player. Uh, he, he he only can um, do so much with the energy that he has at the age of 33. LeBron James has played a lot of basketball. You got to look at international basketball. You got to look at uh, he, he played for the Team USA, what, three and three Olympics or four Olympics. I know one Olympics they lost. The first Olympics he was in, they lost. But, I mean, Team USA lost. Uh, but he played an eight straight uh, NBA Eastern Conference um you know, oh no, eight eight straight Eastern eight straight Eastern Conference Finals, and he's been in the finals the last three or four years. So he has played a lot of basketball, logged a lot of minutes, and they're gonna have to slow down the uh, the game. Either slow down the game, or LeBron James is not gonna be able to play that many, that many minutes. They're gonna need him for the second half because usually in NBA basketball, the game comes down to the final five minutes, and you need an experienced player like LeBron James. You need your best player to be fresh. So throughout the game, they're gonna to have to do have to have better execution between Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, and all those uh, young guys. Josh Hart. They're gonna to have to have better execution and play better. That so LeBron James can be able to rest. But let's see what uh, Skip did more say. Well, you better have more than that. Well, you gonna do shoot eighty for the whole year? We already got you bet on that. We don't have. Yes, yeah, we can get oh, hey, eighty. Yes, yes. Oh. Now, they had this same bet last year that LeBron James would shoot 80% from the free throw line. He didn't make it. I believe it was like mid-70s. Uh, LeBron James is surprisingly a, not a really good – I mean, he's an average free throw shooter. He should not He should be a be better than the average free throw shooter. And Shannon Sharp lost a lot of bet, uh, bets last year to uh, skip with the, with the uh, free throw uh, shoot. Now he's doing it again. So – He's going to lose again this year because LeBron James is going to he, – he, that's what he is. He's a 70, 70 to 75% uh, free throw shooter. So he's not going to shoot 80%. As the year goes on, he's going to wear down. Uh, his shot is going to be off you know, because you, you need your legs for your shot. And it seems like LeBron James, in order for them to make the playoffs, he's going to have to play at an MVP-type level. It's like 80. What am I going to do with all this? Want some diet do? Yeah, you already got 11 pieces. It's a lot. Well, let's get right to it and start with LeBron. He made his highly anticipated debut for the Lakers last night in Portland and got off to a fast start. LeBron had two huge highlight dunks on back-to-back -back possessions to put the Lakers up early, but the Lakers were ice cold from three-point range, missing 23 of 30. LeBron finished with a team-high 26. I'm not surprised that they missed 23 of 30. They do not have a three-point shooting team. They have street shooters. You know what I'm saying? LeBron James is a street shooter. Uh, Kyle Kuzma is a th is a street shooter. Josh Hart is a street shooter. Uh, I can't even say LeBron's. A, Le, uh, you know what I'm saying? Ball is even a a street shooter. He's barely a shooter. And um, Brandon Ingram, as well as he can shoot the ball, he's a street shooter. They they do not. What well, Carl Polk is their best probably pure shooter, and he's a street shooter himself. They, they need shooting around him, but, you know, LeBron James chose the incoming roster, you know what I'm saying, with Rondo and um, Lance Stevenson and, you know, those guys. He brought those guys in, JaVale McGee. So they don't have, they don't have enough shooting. In the West, you need some shooting. Uh, you cannot continuously try to run teams out of the gym because you're not going to be able to do that on a night-to-night -night basis points and 12 rebounds but the Lakers lost 128 to 119 overall LeBron has now lost all four openers he has played for a new team here's what he said after the game I like our fight to get back into the game we're down double digits um, I like the way we competed at times I like the way we shared the ball at times as well and um, so those are my positive it's still early we just know we, we literally 
less than a month in. You know, so um, you know, it's still early. You still got to go through some things. Uh, and and LeBron James has six turnovers. I know Skip keeps saying that LeBron James is the best point guard in the league, but when LeBron James handled the ball a lot, he turns the ball over a lot. LeBron James has a lot of games where he has six, seven, eight, even nine turnovers. To me, Chris Paul is still the best point guard in the league. And I bet you bet you money that Chris Paul has a better turnover ratio, uh, assist to turnover ratio than um, LeBron James. LeBron James turns over the ball a lot because he tries to do these fancy passes a lot when he can, when he can do, you know, a normal pass. But, you know, that's, you know, saying that's what he does. He likes a hot dog sometimes and it gets him in trouble. And he have games where he has seven, eight, nine turnovers. Yeah, go through some adversity, see how guys react to it, see how, you know, guy, what gets guys going. Um, so, you know, for me, it's an everyday thing. You know, leadership is not a, uh, you know, a sometime thing. It's an everyday thing all the time. So, you know, I'm going to do that every day. I'm glad. Okay. I'm glad LeBron James said leadership is not a sometime thing; it's a it's, it's an everyday thing. Just like when, when um, you know, just like when J.R. Smith blundered the play last year in the finals, you acted not like a leader when you blew up on the sidelines and blew up on the court. That was not a leader. Remember, it's not a sometime thing; it's a all it's an everyday thing. Those are your words. So in the first game, were you encouraged or discouraged by what you saw last night? I saw some encouraging things, but I was more discouraged. Were you really? Yes, Skip, because my fears, my fears came more quick than I thought they would. I knew they would scroll the shooting from outside, and that was my major concern. Uh, LeBron got him off to a great start, start two top all dunks, in which you sandwich. I mean, I hope people are not surprised that they um, struggle shooting the ball. They don't have, they don't have enough pure shooters on their team so I don't know why people you know are surprised that they shooting the back now they're gonna have games to where they're gonna shoot pretty good from the um three-point line but they're gonna have more bad games than not because they are streak shooters and with streak when you have streak shooters out of 82 games you may have what 20 some games maybe when you shoot really well from the field but it's not gonna hold up especially in the west you can't get away with that in the west in the east you could probably get away with it but in the west those those teams out there scoring a hundred some points a game, man. In between one of a thing, Lillard, the crowd was into it. I, at first, I couldn't tell if they were rooting for Portland or they were rooting for LeBron because it, it was an electric atmosphere. Obviously, there were some Lakers fans and present. There were a lot of Lakers fans. That's what Skip, that's what, that's what I was afraid of is that the outside shooting, and this is the reason why uh, I don't think LeBron can average a triple double because uh, over the last five years, no one has assisted on more three point shots than LeBron James. And he just he just doesn't have those on his team. That, that is a good point because he had only six assists last night. And again, if they would have cashed some of those cross court yeah. passes in the first half, I mean, yeah. over twenty one outside the restricted area, over twelve for three inside the restricted area. They're twenty five for twenty eight. They started the game over fifteen from the three point line, mm -hmm. and that was the problem. Skip. And here uh, another thing you and I discussed it yesterday about LeBron and Luke Walton want to manage LeBron's minutes. This is why he can't. Now, LeBron James checked out of the game in the first quarter at 3 minutes and 20 seconds. No, he's not going to be, be able to manage LeBron James' minutes as long as this team cannot score, you know, when he's on the bench. Now, yes, I think he has a slightly better roster than the roster he had in Cleveland, but this roster is not proven. You know, Kyle Kuzma never been to the playoffs. Brandon Ingram never been to the playoffs. Le LeBron, Le uh, Ball never been to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? They got people that have been to the playoffs and even won championships. And Rondo, you know what I'm saying? JaVel McGee, guys of that ill. Lance Stevenson has been to the Eastern Conference Finals. He has some playoff experience. But for the most part, their core, their core players, they don't have any playoff experience. So, yeah, LeBron James is going to have to play heavy minutes, and they're going to have to slow down the ball. They're going to have to slow down the pace. I, I, I was shocked by that, but go ahead. Because he normally plays the entire first He playoffs. does. He checks out for three minutes and 20 seconds. They're up by five. He checks back in at the start of the, the second quarter. They're down by three. That's an eight-point swing. So now what you were thinking, like, you know what, hey, we might be able to so We might be able to let LeBron play 35, 36, 30, 32 to 35 minutes. Next thing you know, he's 37 minutes. Um, the outside shooting, I mean, I, I, I thought JaVale McGee was unbelievable. His energy is infectious. I mean, he's blocking shots with one in, running the floor, dunking the ball, getting long.
Yeah, JaVale McGee was, the, to me, the only guy that really played consistently throughout the game uh, with his defensive press, uh, presence, blocking shots, changing shots, grabbing rebounds, dunking on everybody. Uh, LeBron James is going to have to have other guys step up, like Kyle Kuzma going to have to step up. Brandon Ingram going to have to step up. I know people are still high on Brandon Ingram, but he hasn't popped yet. You know what I'm saying? And my, and my level of, you know, a player is if you pop that first year, you can you, you can be a, a Hall of Famer, possible legend. You pop the second year, you can be a perennial all-star. You know what I'm saying? You pop the third year, you can be an all-star, you know, about three or four or five times in your career. But this is year four for Brandon Ingram. He hasn't popped yet, really. You know what I'm saying? He has not played on the team that – this is his first year playing on the team, of, you know, that can win, that has a chance to win because of the president of LeBron James. I don't know if Brandon Ingr Ingram got that in him, but we'll see, though, know, as the season goes along. But like I said, though, uh, am I really high on the Lakers' young players? I'm not really that high on the, on, the, on their young players. Uh, Ball, you know what I'm saying? Lonzo Ball, what is he going to be? You know what I'm saying? I, I know he, he can defend a little bit. He can rebound for a guard. He's 6'7". He can pass. But to me, he doesn't, he doesn't pass people open. He doesn't drive the lane. He's not an offensive threat. Then you look at Brandon Ingram, like I said, he hasn't popped yet. He was picked second, just like Lonzo Ball was picked second. And Brandon Ingram hasn't popped yet in this year four. You know what I'm saying? You got a player like Josh Hart. How much better is he going to be? How much better is Kyle Kuzma going to be? Kyle Kuzma is a little bit of an older player. Maybe he has already reached his ceiling. I said this in the beginning of the year. They should have packaged some of those players and went to go get Damian Lillard. Because Portland clearly have to get rid of uh, him or McCullough. Because they, they are the same player. Neither one of them are playmakers. They are both have uh, the ball in their hands too much. They're black holes and the ball gets in their hand. And what Magic should have did was package Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, and then somebody else for uh, Damian Lillard. That's what they should have did. But like I said, we'll see how the season go on. I got the Lakers uh, being anywhere from a 6 to 8 seed. Or not even make the playoff, making the playoffs at all. It's going to be tough for them, to, to me, to make the playoffs. I, I still see Portland making the playoffs. I know some people don't have Portland making the playoffs. They got Utah in there. I got, uh, you know, we all got, got people like Golden State, Houston, uh, the Jazz. I believe Denver is going to make it this year. Denver barely didn't make it last year. Mi uh, Minnesota, depending on what Jimmy Butler do, I believe they're going to make it. The, the Lakers may be on the outside looking in, man. I'm out. Let me know what y'all think. I'm out. Subscribe to the channel.